Welcome to the first part of a series of videos by CACI discussing the multi-channel world. Matt Hay from CACI will now take you through this video discussion on how you approach the integrated customer experience. So my name is Matt Hay, I run the consulting business at CACI. Um, we do customer management um, strategy and projects around the world in a multiple sectors, telco, financial services, um, travel, online gaming, etc, etc. Um, we've been doing this what sort of work for the last 15 years now and over the last couple of years we've started to come up more and more against this concept that people call an integrated customer experience and we found this a little bit confusing to be honest um, so we wanted to understand it a bit a bit better so we we commissioned this report from e-consultancy to ask a lot of organizations what they thought about integrated customer experience because the reason we were getting confused was we we weren't sure why it was different to what people had called CRM in the past or customer management or customer value management and I think the report kind of emphasized to us that we were right to be a little bit skeptical there does seem to be a bit of emperor's new clothes around this and actually people are getting carried away with the buzzwords again but the fundamental challenges that they're facing are no different to the challenges that organizations have faced for the last 10-15 years ever since the world became about multi-channel um, so what we use the report to do is just to just to show people why they need to think about these things in, in a kind of incremental way. So the key message that came out of the report was that, that people and organisations are, are struggling to address an integrated customer experience purely because it's so big and so complicated, or at least that's the perception. This really isn't new. It, it, these things have been difficult as I said, ever since multiple um, touch points arrived in organisations, which essentially was when, when organisations started to use call centres much more about 15, 20 years ago. Because of that, we don't actually believe that the, the secrets to addressing this have changed significantly. Yes, the problems have got a bit more complicated in that there are more channels and there is more data, but fundamentally the principles that we've adopted to address these with organisations in a successful way we believe still still do apply. So what we try to do in these in this presentation is just explain some of our our views on how you should address this, where you should start and what are the first things you should start to do. So having said all that about how it's the same challenge it is easy to understand why people do view it as incredibly complicated because it can all feel like so far off what eight people are able to do today and the, ma the world will magically transform in some, in some way so that everything happens more quickly, all the channels are nicely integrated, data moves seamlessly between various touch points with your customers and everything happens in much higher volume than it does today. And, you know, I'm, I'm a consultant, so I have to take some responsibility for this. I do slides that tell people that, that miracles will happen and everything will go much more quickly. And that is one of the reasons why people get concerned, because they just can't grasp how they can go from the world that they live in today to this blue sky future where everything's perfect. And, and the reality is... For lots of organisations, that's, that's very hard to do, and it's not easy. Looking below that blue sky, you can see that, that it does get complicated, and this is why organisations often suffer from paralysis in terms of customer experience and, and aren't able to move any, any further forward, because it just seems too daunting. You've got all the channels, you've got the data that underpins it, you've got the technology, you've got the analytics and you've got to find a way to corral the organisation so it makes 
joined up decisions about what to do for individual customers and prospects. Our experience, I'm sure this won't come as much of a surprise, is that the trick to this is not to try and tackle it all at once. It's just too big and too complicated for most organisations. The, the way that we normally move these things forward is through a combination of pilots within channels where you prove out the benefit of changing the customer experience at the same time as understanding truly what the key technical and data requirements are to make it work. So lots of smaller pilots focused on showing to the business that it will deliver biz true business benefit. One of the other things we do to try and move the debate forward within organisations is actually illustrate to key stakeholders what an integrated customer experience will mean for their customers, so why it will be better. These sorts of what we call customer journey maps we found to be very, very successful in educating board level stakeholders as to why they want to do this, what, what the actual impact will be on their customer's perception of the organisation. And we, we just feel this is, this is key to promote the understanding of what we mean by integrated customer experience. This is the representation of it. It doesn't matter at this point what has to happen in the background. The first point to always establish is actually what, what sort of difference are we going to make for our customers once you can explain that, then people can start to understand how the business is going to benefit from that financially. So as I've said, the experience that we've had is that organisations that succeed in improving their customer experience tend not to try and tackle everything all at once. We've coined this expression, start small, think big. So incremental pragmatic steps towards an improved um, customer experience but with an end goal in mind at all times. Basically the, the fundamental principle is try not to do things that make it harder for you to get to that end vision. Everything should be helping you get nearer towards it. Depend, deciding on what those things are, as we've said, is a balance of where's the value to the organisation in terms of improving that customer experience and how does that trade off against the ease of put, putting in place the improvements to the customer experience that you need to in order to, to realise that value. The other thing to bear in mind is organisational alignment. So as well as business value, it's actually moving the organisation to a place where it's able to support an integrated customer experience. One of the key factors there is getting the channels to work together. So if there are initiatives in the business that enable one or two channels to link up more closely and work in tandem, then that is obviously another strong candidate in terms of a place to start. In terms of where to start, we've done some thinking and analysis based on the, on the report that was produced. And we think we've identified seven key habits that organisations have succeeded in improving their customer experience demonstrate. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about next time. Um, so I look forward to doing that. You've been listening to Matt Hay from CACI. Thank you for watching part one. Join us again for part two of this multi-channel discussion when we'll be looking at the seven keys to having a highly integrated customer experience.